Amen. Somebody may want to ask, how do you feel at 65? I feel thankful. I feel grateful. It's just nothing short of gratitude to the Lord. That is part of all the things the enemy would have preferred. We are alive today to see 65 years in the on earth dream. We thank the Lord for his for the privilege of being called to serve him. We thank the Lord for brothers and sisters on Facebook, brothers and sisters on YouTube, brothers and sisters who are with connected with us International Ministers Fellowship, connected with us in the Global School of Ministry and Masterclass, connected with us in the Global Prayer and Spiritual Cabinet and all the various things the Lord is pleased him to do. Calling Pastor Grace and I to just be vessels either of holding the vision or driving the vision or boat. And we thank him so much. And we thank all of you who are here today. We're just going to conclude a course today and I may come up with a short video later in the day. And I know there are a number of prayers that are all over, you know, being put this morning already. I've, uh, you know, been part of two very critical, lovely prayer meetings for with little children in school in Kenya and with pastors who are retraining in Kenya. It's such a wonderful thing early this morning. And so by the grace of the Lord, we're going to conclude because 127 signs, wonders, and miracles in this lesson. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to receive from you conclusion of the cause today. We we'll pray that just as you intended, so shall it be. This cause will challenge all of us to step up, to get beyond the ordinary, to live in such a way as people who, upon whom the end of the age has come. Lord, quicken us with your, by your spirit, with your word. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. So today's lesson 13 is why we must embrace the fullness of divine signs, wonders, and miracles as we step forward to fulfill the Great Commission. It's a mouthful. The idea is, if we're going to do the Great Commission, then we need His power. <laughs> and we need demonstration in different ways. And we don't want it to be confused. Remember, there are four categories of people who can engage in miracles, signs, and wonders. And number one is every Christian is a residual authority in the kingdom. Every Christian born again. If you're generally born again, you are born of the Spirit. And so you have the DNA of your Father. You are joined to the Lord. You are one Spirit with Him. That is clear. The Spirit that convicted you, the Spirit that sealed you, is the very same Spirit that filled Yeshua at the baptism of John. So every believer can walk in a measure of miracle signs and wonders, but that's, all, that's not all. Then we also know that by the grace of the Lord, you know, that our being together as a body, there is synergy released when two or three are gathered together in his name. Yeshua is right there and things can happen because we can pray. Remember when Peter was in prison, the church went up praying and Elohim sent an angel and Peter was delivered. So there is power in unity. Then number three, there are those who are gifted and called to be instruments of doing great miracles, signs, and wonders. It's an election. Elohim didn't consult you to choose them. He didn't use any objective standard. It may be the most, you know, the basest. If you can call that to any word, it could be the most disregarded. It could be the ones that nobody will give a chance, yet he anoints them. And brothers and sisters, if it is you, you got that specific type of gift to do a, a miracles and signs and wonders, don't be conceited. Don't think it's your own. Don't, give, don't be proud. Don't be arrogant. Don't try to build on your charisma and to divide the church into a cult around yourself. No. Whatever you are, remember that miracles, signs, and wonders are not given to divide the body. It's to enhance the body. So it's so important that we know that. And so also don't be intimidated when there are people like that in your environment who are called to raise the dead or heal people of HIV or all these sicknesses that ravage the world. 
Don't be intimidated and don't let them own you because of their gift. If you need anything from them, tap into the grace in them. You don't have to pay for that grace. You don't have to become their servant or their, their, their property before you can tap into that grace. If it's a gift of grace, it's from the Father, then it is yours. Gifts and callings are for one another. Our gifts are not for us. They are for the people we are assigned to. As we're teaching here, you know what? It's not about us. So it doesn't matter even if the voice cracks, even if there's headache or whatever. No, the Father wants to feed his people and what he wants to do through me and pass to grace, no matter what, will always be here by his grace. If we're not here, you know it's terrible, whatever it is that will hold us back from doing. And that also applies to every gift in the body. Then we also let you know that there is also the sovereign acts of Elohim where he supernaturally. You don't need to have prayed. He said before you pray, I before you call, I will answer. And he's able to give you exceedingly abundantly above what you think or ask according to his power that works in you. And that is where Elohim shows his Elohim. So any of these four dimensions can be a work. But we need to understand that at the end of the day, Miracles, signs, and wonders are given for us to fulfill the unfinished uh, uh, Great Commission. Yeshua has done his part. And his Holy Father in John 17, I'm not asking you to take them away. Keep them. Keep them away from the wicked one. Thine they are. Mine is thine. You know, keep them away so that they will continue the work. Brothers and sisters, every kingdom has a power, economic and healthcare system guaranteed by the king or head of state, which works for all citizens. For instance, you post a letter, you expect your letter to get there. Why? Because you are part of a system where the postman comes, you know, you, you, you drop off your po you drop off your mail in the post box or in front of your own house and they come they pick it up or you go to the post office, the system works. You you expect to use the rail system. The air travel system, there's an economic system, there's an educational system, and you just flow with it in the kingdom. There's a power system. It's the power of Holy Spirit that moves upon every believer. And it wants every believer to be an instrument of reconciling the lost to the Father. By the agency of the blood of Yeshua and the authority of his name. And that assignment requires us to flow in a measure of what our head is. As he is, so are we. We are citizens of the kingdom and ambassadors of the kingdom. The Lord wants us to know. That's why when Yeshua rose from the dead and his disciples were excited, they want to go for him, he said to them, don't go for me. Wait for the promise of the Father. Because he knew they were being sent forth to the kingdoms of men, to kingdoms ruled by Satan, the God of this world, to the strong man armed, keeping his palace, and he wants them to be the greater the more authoritative, so that you can go to where he's holding people in bondage because those who have not been saved, a great deal are just held by the prince of this world who blinds their eyes, as Paul told the Corinthians. You know what? The people, ordinarily they will be saved, but they are not being saved. Why? The God of this world has blinded their eyes. As you are going to them, you are not going to go and just speak grammar to them. You need to go with the capacity to either design what they are going through and sort it out or speak words that are inspired by Holy Spirit, empowered by Holy Spirit, so that the hardened hearts, all the things people construct, the armor people construct and stay behind the armor, when you go by the power of Holy Spirit, the word you speak will not be your word. There will be spirit and life. The word will penetrate through the armor and pierce through to convict them of sin, of righteousness and judgment. And the word you speak will be so relevant to them, you may not even know what you are saying. The word will be touching things about them, and then they bow to the authority of the King of Kings. So, men and brethren, the Lord wants us to know that this is what it's all about, is so that we can go and finish the unfinished Great Commission. You see, anything you try to do in the kingdom outside the power of Holy Spirit and outside the intervention of divinity, anything you do outside that remit, you know what they're doing? Religion. 
learn behavior. You teach people how to go. That's why when you go to many places, what people are being taught is what to call proselytizing. Proselytizing is you are not leading people to the Savior. You are leading them to your church. You are leading to your own little corner. You are leading to your own little setup. You are leading them to yourself. That's proselytizing. Seeking membership of churches. It leads to sheep migration. They migrate from here to there to there. What people need is to encounter Yeshua. And when you operate in the realm of what has been described, miracles, signs, and wonders, then the world can have effect in them to teach them, to show them who the king is. And when they encounter the king, that unforgettable encounter leads to conversion. So that's why we need to remind ourselves what we studied in lesson two, miracles, that Miriam Webster says is an unusual or wonderful event that is believed to be caused, caused by the power of God. That's Miriam Webster. And then, you know, miracles offer proof that Elohim we serve is the same one which who Israel walked with in time past. The same one, the God of signs, and wonders, the God of miracles, the great I am who I am. We are connected to him. And because he's a miracle walking Elohim, the God of the whole universe, is anything too hard for him? The answer is no. He wants us to walk in the measure of what he has. So that wherever he sends us, any nation he sends us, nothing. They can they can tell you all kinds of stories. They are impenetrable. Nobody can go there. Nobody can penetrate. When you show up, the land opens up. Why? Because the authority of the Father on your life is going to be at play where he sends you. It doesn't matter how hard the city is. It doesn't matter how tough it is. If you go in the strength of Holy Spirit, there will be a way. He will show you by either wisdom, he will show you by manifestation of power, he will show you by what he will use you to touch people's lives that will bring transformation inside of them. They know the Lord is with you. And so it's so important that we recognize this. Okay, men and brethren, but remember that one of the pe people we quoted in defining miracles, Margaret Minix of Richmond, Virginia, said the dictionary def definition of miracle is a phenomenon that cannot be explained by known laws of nature. And then she went on to say, miracle is a supernatural occurrence that goes against the laws of nature. And that is something important. The Lord doesn't want us to live under nature. You see, a lot of times Christians condemn themselves without knowing it. That's why there's a yo-yo going on. One day you believe, another day you don't believe. Listen, if you are a believer, you need to know that it is possible for you to live above the laws of nature by His Spirit, by His grace. And that is very important. So it doesn't matter the report of doctors, what they see with their eye, what they tell you. If you are tuned to heaven and are led by Holy Spirit, your Father can guide you and your Father can back you up in anything that is relevant to you. All things that pertain to life and godliness. She gave the instance of the miracle of water, turning water to wine at Cana of Galilee. The law of nature says water cannot be wine until it's fermented or processed into that. You know what? He did it in a flash of a moment. And he who is our head says, look at me, watch me. That's what he tells us. When I send you, I'm going to back you up in that profession in that business, in that city, in that location, the Lord has promised to back you up. Why should you reject what the Lord has offered you? It doesn't make sense at all to reject it. It doesn't make sense at all to not even explore it because faith is about exploration. Faith is about trying what you've not tried before. Listen, brothers and sisters, you've got to understand the principles of faith. You must receive it first in your spirit, man. You must believe in your heart, just like salvation. Believe in your heart. Confess with your tongue. You are saved. So also faith, you must receive it in your spirit, man, that the Lord can and will do it for you. And you speak because you believe. You speak. The word you speak will be spirit and life. And the Father says he'll back you up. That's why he said in Mark 11, 22 to 24, Whatever you pray, whatever you believe and pray for, 
and you believe Elohim for it and pray, stand upon what you believe, it shall come to pass. Like I told you yesterday, don't be moved if it doesn't happen in a flash of a moment. There are miracles that are instantaneous. There are miracles that are process-based. It happened, even in the ministry of Yeshua. Yeah, there's somebody in here, they say, you know what, go. Go. There are people he touched, based in them. Use the point of contact. He said, what do you see? He said, I see men like trees. He went again and touched him. So don't be intimidated. If these things does happen immediately, instantaneously, the important thing is believe that. That's why he says we should be careful. We shouldn't use our tongue for jokes and you know, all these jokes that people love to joke. No. There's power in your tongue. So brothers and sisters, there's signs. Remember what he says. Mira Webster says sign is something such as an action or event which shows that something else exists, is true, or will happen. And we told you again that based on what uh, Sister Margaret Minnick said, he says a sign is whatever points to a deeper revelation. A sign, something that points to a deeper revelation. And we told you in lesson two that for instance, Gideon said, Elohim, if you are with me, I want a sign. This is a fleece. In one of them, let there be water all around. Let there be dew all around here dry. In another instance, the Lord did it. In another instance, let there be dew on this one and all else dry. Sign. There are things you are doing. You want a sign. You want to marry. When there is not too sure, Ask the Lord for a sign. The Lord can show you. He can show you through any way. Just be open, sensitive. You want to get into a new profession, a new job. You want to move to a new city. Ask the Lord for a sign. It is within your right to ask him. And the Lord can show you whether he's in it or not. You know, we, we got to come to the place. And then remember, we got to come to a place where we don't accept ordinariness. Then what are wonders? Wonders, Miriam Webster says, a cause for astonishment or admiration. Marvel, something that, whoa. And that's why it's important for us to know that our Elohim is Elohim of woe. He's a warring Elohim. We hold him in awe. And he shows us woe. If you hold him in awe of his glory, of his majesty, of his power, of his presence, he will show us wonders. Whoa. There are things the Lord wants to do for your life. For you. You. I say you. When it happens, it will be war. The next in tears of joy. It says, you God. God, who am I? That you are mindful of me. Could you? Can you be ready for that? Can you be ready? I see you. For that type of whoa. That's what wonders do. Wonders amaze. Wonders you know, shock in a good way. And the Lord says, listen, I am the Elohim of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? He said, call out to me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things you didn't know of. That's the Elohim we serve. Brothers and sisters, we need to come to that place to know that the Lord wants us to know we are joined to him by the same spirit. First Corinthians six seventeen. Our life should not be ordinary religious exertions. We shouldn't be plodding along in ordinariness. We are to live beyond the natural realm. We should be downloading from eternity to time all things that are needful for our holistic well-being. All things means all things. When you come to believe that all things mean all things are possible for him that believe it, then you are really about to live. As children of Elohim, ours should be life of signs and wonders and miracles. Let us be confident to seek signs. Let us be confident to expect signs. Let us be confident to see what Elohim is showing us and not to be in a rush. Isaiah 8, 18. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders in Israel. From the Lord of hosts, we dwell in Mount Zion. Yeshua he came to bring many sons to glory. That's what he came to do. He came to bring many sons of Elohim to glory. We're not religious folks to gather into building, to go and look at a man 
you can look at a woman to be spectators, you know, to be spectators in a theater type of church operation. No, we are called for something higher, something deeper. There are some miracles that have bespoke to you as a person, and you must got to learn about them. You must get to expect to flow because it is important to know that the signs, wonders, and miracles are said in lesson one. They are integral part of the DNA of the kingdom church based on the new covenant which was sealed by the blood of Yeshua. The all-sufficient, omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient Elohim, he relates with his creation and children in ways that have an intrinsic war element. His mighty acts cannot be catch the attention of all earthlings. He said in 1 Corinthians 4.20, For the kingdom of Elohim is not in word, but in power. And in Hebrews chapter 2, you know, verse 3 and 4, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that had him, Elohim also bearing them witness with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles, and gifts of Holy Ghost, according to his own will. That's what happened to the Alpha Church, the first century church. Brothers and sisters, listen, this is serious. It was when the first century church, people started to think, well, we can live without Holy Spirit. We can live without signs and wonders and miracles. You know what happened? The next thing is that they left the fivefold. They went for the bishopric. People think it's only uh, me. I used to think that it was when Rome came. No, before Rome came, the backsliding away from the fivefold and the life of war, the spiritual life had begun. Second century, bishoprics all over, every major city, bishops emerged. What happened to the fivefold? Paul, Elohim, Yeshua personally raised Paul to guide his church with a master plan that includes the work of the fivefold that will bring about the, 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 the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek, a spiritual people, a royal priesthood, royal and priesthood, able to exercise authority of the kingdom and intercede for human beings. By the second century, you know what? They set aside the fivefold and the Melchizedek priesthood they went for the Nimrodic and the Aaronic priesthood about ropes, about cap, about this big cap. They say it's Holy Ghost, it's the tongues of fire, about the staff of office. So the fivefold was shunted aside. The bishopric began to be prominent in second century, third century. By the fourth century, it was that same bishopric that embraced the hand of Rome in marriage and gave it away. Listen, what started in the 4th century when the larger wing of the church led by bishops because the apostles, apostolic prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers were set aside. Listen, that's what is going to happen again towards the end of the age. The church world is going to raise mighty people who will prepare the way for the Antichrist. They are the people that validate the Antichrist. They will lead the church to embrace the Antichrist, not knowing that it is him. And when the Antichrist emerges, he is the one that will destroy the religious church. Go and read the book of Revelation. He is the one that will savage the church and Israel. He will be a friend of the church. He will be a friend of Israel. The Antichrist to come is lying low. He may not even know what's going on with him. But this idea of past, pastors, bishops, apostles, prophets, asking us to go into politics, embrace this man, embrace this man, that is the spirit of the Antichrist at work. Brothers and sisters, the Lord wants you to come out from among them. Come out of Babylon. Go for gold. And go for gold is have a personal relationship with the supreme, extraordinary Elohim as your father. And let his power flow through you. And what he wants to accomplish through you, that's what gets accomplished. It's not what you plan. Listen, that's why it works. And so by way of... Um, 
assignment today, I uh, want to yeah uh, yeah a, a brother called a man called Richard Knob in his article in Renew uh, website he said look he, he graded miracles into five one creational miracles that are from raw two sustaining miracles where the power of God sustains three providential miracles that's provisions and predictive miracles of what is to happen and then five suspension miracles suspending certain laws of nature Whichever is the case, walk in miracles, signs and wonders. Don't let anybody tell you it's not for today. Or to tell you the Holy Spirit is ceased. It's not for today. Discover your identity in the royal priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. Then you can function as a king who has authority. You can also function as a priest. Number one, assignment. Please give three reasons why we should embrace signs, wonders, and miracles as an inheritance and equipment to fulfill the Great Commission. Two, what is the impact of the 13 lessons of the course on you as a person? Then three is the director of studies will give you number three, which is for those in the master class, you're going to write an essay of not more than 500 words summarizing what you learned there are some key things the director of studies will show you that will comfort and please bear with us there are three lessons we're going to produce the teaching notes for now take the video do your assignments and by the grace of the lord we'll produce all the teaching notes for you we'll pray now and i make announcement father let your name be glorified let this word have the effect in the lives of the people quicken their faith to believe and to receive and your name be glorified in yeshua's name we pray Amen and amen. Receive your miracle. Receive it right now. No, no, whatever it is. Father, today you kept me 65. Satan said no. The enemy said no. But you said, you are my creator. And look at it, 65. Father, I pray that anyone under the sentence of death here, it is broken now. Anyone for whom there is right is reaching off, you cannot live, or this cannot happen, that cannot. Father, visit everyone with your signs and wonders and miracles. Give your people a woe and amazement. Lord, bless your people. Let it be well with them in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Today, we're calling for, for prayer. That's the word. Listen, I don't even need any greeting, bad day greeting. Please, if you can, just say prayer. If you're posting it, post a prayer as the Lord will prompt you. Post this as a prayer. That's all we do since yesterday. Uganda, South Africa, last night, this morning, before 6 o'clock, the children in Kenya, that is their 9 o'clock, in a school, you know, the Grace School System, they were there to, you know, pray for us and wish happy birthday. It was awesome, you know, to be with them on Zoom this morning. And then Pastor Walter, his wife, who arranged it all, the Pastor Walter was also teaching pastors and ministers, and he was taking them through their final exams and we had opportunity to speak to two classes this morning. The brethren in Asia, Asian nations and the Middle East, you know what, in the next two hours or so, I should be with them on Zoom. They are meeting to pray. The brethren in Zimbabwe are meeting by 7 p.m. their time. Those in UK, they are meeting by 8 p.m. our time here. Those in Ireland, those in Italy, of course, the United States of America, a prime missionary mission field, they're also meeting today to pray for us on Zoom. And there'll be other prayer meetings here and there, Zambia, it's expected to be on, and others, you know what, we're thankful tomorrow, Kenya will be praying also, you, you know, and by the grace of the Lord, you know, uh, tomorrow is the Global Prayer Spiritual Cabinet, and they will also pray for us. And on Sunday, the prayer will pray for us. So Friday, Saturday, no, Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, four days, prayer. If you want to pray the full prayer, there's a prayer guide. We'll send it to you. It's comprehensive, and you can pray for us as the Lord gives you grace. Amen. How, how are you doing? Thank you all. You know, we're so excited for all of you. Uh, may the Lord bless you. It is well with you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.